right, so it looks in fairly good shape in there. It's not dirty at all. Not dirty at all. All right. So if on the first examination, we're gonna look down in there. And see the leg of the spring right there. It feels tight on the thing. Now replacing the spring again, you have to take this off. This is this will just come out. Um, you have to take all this off. Take the combo chamber out. And if we look at the combo chamber here, we can see how old this one is. But I know there's something wrong with the spring. So we're going to go ahead and dig down to it real quick. And I'll just show you. Um, actually, I'm going to reset this and we're going to check out the code. All right. So um, Okay, so the code, when it doesn't work, you have this doodad here. In case you've never seen one of these, this goes into the inside of that, which when you turn it, retracts the chassis right here. Now, we'll see that, and then we'll look at another one, and we see it works fine. So obviously we've got an issue going on in there, which is causing probably the main problem. So um, we're gonna replace it with that one, but in the meantime, we will use this as an example. So when you have no code in there, when you just turn the knob, that's how it functions. This does not move at all. That's the clutch part of it. It's clutching out right there. But when you put the code in, which is one, two, three right now, then you do that. And I watch these pegs. That is what's turning and this activates differently. So your combination chamber is doing whatever it's doing in there, which affects the post and affects it differently. No code, this stays still. We'll put this on just so you can see what it's doing. Ah. Oh, that's not a very good. Okay, this must be for a different lock because it's not so something's going on there. But anyway. We'll just pretend it retracts the latch. Let's try it with the old one. No latch retraction. And it's jammed up. So everything's doing what it's supposed to in here. It's just a matter of this thing being screwed up. So to take this apart, you would take it apart just like this. This is how you take it apart if you are handing it. In other words, if it is on a right-hand door, the latch is facing this way. And left-hand door, you would unscrew these four screws and simply flip it around. You would take it and then turn it around like this and then put it back on. So that's pretty easy to hand it. All right, we've got a spacer in here. That spacer is for different size doors. If you had a thinner door, you'd take that off. Put it back on. Makes it for a thin door. And we're gonna, let's see, do we have, a, no, it's not gonna work, let's see. Ah, flathead, maybe a flathead will work. Not really. Okay, let's dig, dig on down some more. 
stick on down some more. Unfortunately, the longer this video is, the less less chance I have of being able to get it uploaded this morning because of our crappy service, both land service, Wi-Fi, and cell phone. So, unfortunately, when I do these videos in the morning time and I want to get them out as soon as possible, it ties up my phone for several, several hours. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Oh, so uh, I carry a refurbished, just to point this out, I carry a refurbished simplex with me to be able to switch out at customer's places. See, there doesn't look like anything's wrong with this. not come out hmm. I'm gonna inspect this pretty closely I don't know why it's acting up I'm gonna repack it with grease and maybe use this for an emergency one Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Um, so yeah, looks like everything else is okay. So I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart because I bet you that spring is acting up just because of how the knob was acting. It may have been because of that. I'm not really gonna show it on video because again I wanted to try to keep this one as short as possible. And I've thought about doing a simplex video before. Maybe I'll do a full simplex video. That would be a certainly a long video but I want to go ahead and strip this one down anyway. So to take it apart, I'll just go ahead and show you real quick. You got a little clippy here. A little bitty clip right there. Now one thing I've found it's good to do if you are taking these apart for your first time is have a magnet. so that you don't lose these little bitty screws or uh, clips and stick it on the magnet, like stick a magnet off to the side. So you remove that one and you remove this one. And they're the same size, so you don't have to worry about that. Another thing that's really important is to remember how these legs work, because once you take these legs off, you have to put it back on right and they swivel so if you just remember the copper one which is on the bottom goes down or take a picture of it because once we take it off here like this ah, come on off you can put it back on incorrectly so if you put it back on like that um it's not gonna work right so when you take that off, it's a good idea to 
set it down somewhere where it won't be disturbed just like it was on the thing so you remember how it goes on and once that's off you take these two screws out to get your combo chamber off if you were switching out your combo chamber you don't have to do anything else that holds your combo in so this one is 18 years old 10 no sorry <laughs> 13 years old i can add i promise so anyway i'm gonna pop the cover off this the new style you don't have to do that say if you had lost the combo for this you don't have to do that anymore but you would basically this is a washer right here and the new combo chamber comes with a new washer but you take it apart by prying it right here nope wrong side uh prying it right here which is uh, involves some finagling. I don't know, can you see me right there? There we go. So this wasn't necessary on this one, but it is kind of necessary because I want to lubricate it thoroughly. Yeah, this was the recommended thing to do when you lost a combination and it was really horrible to do. So, and then you also had to come in here and slide this off. Pop that out of the way. Align all four of your gears now that they're free. So you take your gears, line them all up like we have them here, and then snap this down. I don't know how this Happy Friday video turned into a full service of a simplex, but sorry about that. That'll make up for the lack of videos that I've been doing, I guess, huh? Doot, doot. Make sure it snaps down all the way. And it feels gritty. So at this point, I want to go ahead and hose this down with some lubricant. It feels gritty because it's not sitting in there correctly. So I'm going to go grab uh, some lubricant while we're doing this, right? And a paper towel. And a paper towel. This is a hint about a major video coming out. This would be servicing your Simplex 1000. Wonder if I'll get more views on that if I name it that. Yeah, I mean, I'll do Happy Friday servicing Simplex 1000. Got to line all my little gears up there and snap it into position so this may have been one of the issues there what's going on there is this not snapping like it should down flush it's like bent 
And now that may have certainly caused a problem with the code. <clears throat> so typically when you have a non-solvable problem or something that is going on, like a button's messed up on one of these. Let's see, let me try this. Maybe I just didn't have it lined up right. No, it is definitely... Oh, there we go. Okay, I see what it was. This was... It was hitting that. Alright, so we're back together there. <clears throat> and this is what it is. This is It's called blanked out. It, it's a no combination right here. And then we... Oh, yeah. We can't, can't forget about this little fella. Little black clip there. Make sure he's clipped on. We're being careful not to push the buttons. Don't push the button. Don't do it. Now it is best to pin this back down. Ah! So that it does not randomly come apart. There we go. And you're going to want to do that on the edge of a vise. So let's take it over here to the edge of a vise. Let's see what I'm at on my film. Oh, 22 minutes. Damn. And put it down so that you're not hitting the button. You'll know if you hit a button because this thing will pop up right there. <clears throat> and give it a little push. I know you can't see that, but. And put your screwdriver across it there. It's good to have three hands at this point. Definitely one of those three-handed job and then I'm gonna peen this again I can already hear the comments now use a different screwdriver use a bigger hey I am using a hammer though instead of a screwdriver that should make y'all happy All right, I got that side down. I'm gonna come over here. Oh, shit. All right, anyway, I'm gonna finish this up because I have other stuff I've gotta do. <laughs> um, I got it peeing back after, or peeing back down, and my next course of action would normally be to take this off and it looks like I do have some type of spring failure right there. Maybe. We'll see. And put this bad boy back on. And set the combo because it's still hopefully blanked out. As soon as you push the button, that tab right there will pop up. So we know it's still zeroed out. So basically whatever number you put in right now and then turn will set the combo to your chosen number. So usually what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and re- Oh wait, we gotta put our washer on. The washer's looking a little rough. So I'm going to spray it as well. All right, put that on, spray it, and go ahead and reattach our little legs. 
Uh, before I put the clips on, I'm going to go ahead and set the combo. And just hold those clips down. So we're going to go one, two, three. Stay down. And then I'm going to turn it and it raises up. And I'm going to put in the combo again. One, two, three. And it flipped over there. And it just set. So now that we are sure we have the combo, we're going to grab these two little fellas. Put them back on. Don't forget about those two. And give it one more spray here because it's pretty gooey. Oh, it just it popped off. That blasted. It's in a hurry. It's in a hurry to finish it. That thing isn't holding down very well. Let's torque some screws down on it. Oh, those may not be the right screws. These may be the right screws. So after I get this back together, I am going to carry on with one of my other projects. And I've got a couple of appointments I've got to go do. I know it's coming up time for one, so that's another reason why I need to get done here. Could go actually work. Get a hose down, hose down, and where's our, remember which way, if we're putting them back on the same door, remember which way you have your handing there. Still gonna come back through, even though I'm putting it all together right now. I'm still gonna come back through. See, that's that's just not working. So this failure is gonna 
kind of, it would normally relegate this to, you can buy a whole new housing here as well, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one from another one and just put it there. Even though that plate didn't fit, I will put it, attach it to this plate. Before I put it back together. Oh, I see what was. That's different. So. We're going to steal this from this play. Ah. There's a little bit different spacer there. put it on this plate. Spacer and all. And this one will probably end up becoming, so that's our bad part. replacement mechanism or parts get all the parts working on it and there's no better way to carry one of every part <laughs> than having a complete refurbished lock with you however again when it comes to the combination chambers, especially one that's that old, you're gonna to wanna to really consider buying a new combination chamber and putting it in. Or the combination chamber service pack, which comes with new arms that, I think it also comes with the knob return spring. I'm not gonna get into the knob return spring again because that is Kind of a whole video in itself just getting to it so we'll go over that in another video but in the meantime let's check this bad boy out